I warned you not to listen to that, Kids My Goat. Now look at you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the 13th Annual uh, 13 Nights of uh, Halloween. I'm Rish Outfield. Uh, I'm Big Yankovic. That's right, you are. And uh, tonight's <laughs> creepy topic. I mean, disturbing holiday Halloween topic is... Okay, so... So you're in the house, and you, you think that you're... In fact, you know you're alone. You've looked around, and there's nobody else at will. You know uh, the dude, family is gone, dude. but then... Okay, no, you got to stop. Why? Why? Oh, uh, is it too scary for you? It's so too it scary is. for me to hear this crap. Anymore. You really? No, seriously. You know what I'm talking about. You, your house. Uh, seriously, Halloween is over, man. Well, what are you talking about? We've got to we do went, 13 of these. We went through 13 already. This would be 14, and we... Uh, uh, even Dia de las Muertas is over. Okay, it's past. It's gone, man. You need to l- let it go. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we got together. I mean, what what are we going to do if not gonna record? Just... It would be we'd have to talk like human beings. Come on, man. Yes, we will have to do that, which is unfortunate. I uh, I do admit, but Halloween's over and done with, man. It's time to move on. We can do 13 somethings of Thanksgiving if you want. 13 afternoons of Thanksgiving. 13 <laughs> afternoons of Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about... Can we still talk about pumpkin pie? Or is yeah, that pumpkin Christmas? spice. Just every every episode is about pumpkin spice. <laughs> now we're going to talk about something else. It's time to move back out into the realm of normal that gets my goat episodes. What do you think of that? I'm not sure I know what normal is anymore. <laughs> uh, you know what I wanted to talk about? I spent... Chlamydia. Yes. I spent an afternoon at the doctor's. <laughs> and they gave me some antibiotics. No, I spent the like the entire summer watching a television show trying to catch up to where I would be ready to see the new episodes when they started up this fall. Uh, I, I hate to let you know, but Honey Boo Boo has been canceled. Man. What? Oh, a sad day for degenerate uh, buckets of crap everywhere. Yeah. This Honey Boo Boo thing, I know nothing of it except via what you say about it. <laughs> I'm so glad that I don't know anything else about it. But I don't understand how you know so much. This has now turned back into a 13 Nights of Halloween scary discussion. No, actually, I've been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, Sadly, I think I saw the first two episodes back when they aired originally last year. Yeah, we talked about them. We did an episode. We did an episode about them. We talked about them. And then I got behind. And... I got so far behind that I couldn't catch back up because, you know, I get my uh, TV shows from Hulu and they only, some shows they keep all the episodes of. This one they did not. Mm. It's the ones where they only give you basically the ones that are available online and I couldn't catch back up to uh, know what was going on and so I got discouraged and I stopped watching it. And then I... uh, I decided I would find a way to catch back up, and so I did. I found a way. Yeah, I see. I had the exact same experience with the show Fringe and the show Arrow. I think we watched them on Hulu, and if you didn't watch them, like, fairly recently after they aired, they would drop off and be replaced by a newer episode. And once I had missed, like, two episodes, I was like, oh, no. And, And I stopped watching the shows altogether. But um, how did you end up watching um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Because well, just... you had told me that you'd watched it, and I told my cousin, hey, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is available on Netflix now. Because my friend watched all of them. He sat down with a, an adult diaper on, and he watched them all. And, and he went on there, and he says, you're lying. It's not on there. We'll just say that I watched them. Oh, I don't want to incriminate. I'm going to plead the fifth on that question. But I watched them. Now that I'm caught back up, though, I watched them on Hulu um, again. And uh, recently we came really close to uh, falling behind again. Because 
basically we watch them Sunday afternoons. Me and my whole, all my family's been watching them with me and they enjoy them a lot. So we'll get together and watch them all together. But because we're watching them together, we won't watch them otherwise. You know what I mean? Because we basically my wife won't let the kids watch them by themselves and we won't watch them without the kids kind of a thing because it's our family thing to do together. And so sometimes Sunday afternoons taken up by other things. We'll have a big, you know, all my extended family's getting together for dinner so we don't have a the ability to watch. We get together with Brian Lincoln day. to do it. Yeah, we got together with Brian Lincoln. I, I missed an episode that night. They actually watched it without me that time and then I watched it later on that week. But that kind of stuff uh happens relatively often. And so um we we came close to to getting too far behind again, but we just caught back up and I'm now completely caught up as of last episode Tuesday, I think it was. So a week ago's episode now. There's a new one tomorrow. I mean, I'm caught up as far as that. Well, you're beyond me then, you know, because I've only seen the first three episodes of season two, and so um, however many there have been, I think there's six more, so, so far. So but, you're like three uh, behind. But I actually watched <clears throat> the first season, you know, as it aired, not on television, you know, DVR'd, but would watch them fairly close to when they were released, and so I was able to share with the people on Facebook and the people, you know, on online that were complaining or that were excited about certain twists and turns and all that. And so your experience and my experience had to have been very, very different. I watched it over a period of, you know, 25 weeks or so mm -hmm. or longer. And you watched it probably within a month, right? Yeah, it was pretty quick. We would watch about three episodes a week as we were watching them. Each Sunday we'd sit down and watch a bunch in a row. And so, yeah, I don't know how many episodes there was in the first ep first season, but we saw them within like a month, month and a half, probably, really close together. When uh, you know there there were a lot of people who stopped watching the show, who tuned in to the first episode. The first episode had really really good ratings, and it never got that high again. There were people I think that felt like it was going to be Avengers the series because that's kind of how. ABC promoted it. They'd show like shots from the Avengers with Thor and Hulk and all that in the TV commercials to make you think that that's what the show was, I guess. And so there were people that had expectations that it would be one thing. And, and then there were a lot of people that felt like the show was really weak, too. See, I, I made it through both seasons of Dollhouse. And, you know, my, my loyalty to Joss Whedon would, <laughs> is pretty high. And so I continued watching it even during the time periods when people are like, oh, I'm done with the show. The show's no good anymore. Um, because I, f I still felt like every single episode had something to offer and I would like laugh or, or be interested in every single one. There were a couple episodes that weren't great, but I never felt like it was just awful. I never felt like it was bad enough for me to not tune in the next week. And then... So there was a shift during the show when suddenly the quality started to ramp up. At least that's how I felt it. And there were a lot of people that were just like, no, nope, they lost me. It's not worth going back for. Uh, but then there would be other people that were just like, oh, hey, I tuned in and it was good again. Or it was better than it ever had been before. How come it couldn't have started out this way? Uh, and by the end of that first season, I thought the show was great. Um, yeah, I really me, enjoyed it. I remember you, you you said the same thing to me once. I think I told you, oh, yeah, we've just seen this episode here. And you're like, oh, well, you're past all of the week episodes and only they only get better from here on out. And uh, yeah, I totally agreed. I, I like that we get cameos here and there from uh, from people that are actually, you know, Marvel Cinematic Universe people. Like there was the episode in which Sif made an appearance, which I thought was, that was a great episode. Totally rad. Uh, and we've seen cameos from people like uh, Nick Fury. Maria Hill. Maria Hill. And of course, Coulson is the main character. Um, it seems like they kind of 
painted themselves into a corner in that they can't ever have cameos from any of the Avengers because Phil Coulson is the lead guy and the Avengers have to believe that he's dead. But why do they have to believe that he's dead? I don't know. You could have a whole interesting, a whole episode of Thor or, or Iron Man or one of these guys coming to realize that he's not dead and, and how can you trust him and is he really Coulson and, and all that stuff. I, it would be neat. That that maybe that's something that's still to come, but yeah, so far we've not had an appearance from any of those big guys. Uh, not even like Hawkeye has. No, appeared. Fury's been the biggest deal that we've had, and Fury was in two episodes, right? Yeah, he was in the final episode of the first season, and he was in like second or the third or fourth episode, yeah, episode. at the end, but. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. My wife was telling me, and she, I'm not sure where she got it from, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was like Perez Hilton or yeah. whatever the website is that she looks at relatively often and finds out her gossip that sometimes is slightly interesting to me, but usually is like, Kim Kardashian got a new pair of pants today. Yay! She went out in them and her butt was big. <laughs> But yeah, she was saying that the ratings this season have been slipping. Oh, really? It's not on the chopping block, but it's uh, it's definitely, you know, they're taking notice of the fact that... And I don't know why that's a big deal. Maybe it's an expensive show or something. Because I, I remember, you know, I've heard, you've heard about shows in the past like... Battlestar Galactica or something where they were so expensive that they had to have just astronomically great ratings or else they were going to get canceled and so they didn't last very long. I don't know if S.H.I.E.L.D. is that way. It seems like it ought to be because it looks basically like a movie. I mean, none of the special effects look crappy. They all look well done and expensive, you know, the invisible planes and crap <laughs> like that. Is It all looks legit every time you see it i assume that the cast isn't expensive but anytime a cast is liked you know the more popular they become the sooner they become expensive uh i don't know but yeah it's interesting because that that was the thing that i noticed you know you had like you were talking about the first season it started out as just kind of so-so and then it started to climb and really get interesting and exciting and you know, there, there's the twists and the turns and the kind of stuff that you just love from a Joss Whedon show. And then the season ended, and then season two started, and it was almost like it wasn't the same show. It was like the sequel to the first season or something like that, you know what I mean? The, the, the people were all there, but now they were all doing very different things than they used to do. Um, which is interesting because they didn't just, you know, do the Simpsons thing where they're like, oh, yeah, we're back to exactly the same. I remember there was the Simpsons episode that uh, always made me laugh where the street dude, the, the bum, they find out he was the guy that actually created Itchy and Scratchy and, uh, they wind up closing down Itchy and Scratchy, and and then Bart and Lisa are trying to figure out how they can save it and get it back. And instead, this like look-alike Bart and look-alike Lisa are the ones that figure it out and save Itchy and Scratchy. And then there's this whole, wow, how are we going to go back to being the same as we always were? And then you see they look out the window and you see like the look-alike Bart is like skating by on a skateboard, and it's like da 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 scary sound but that's what you used to get with shows you know what i mean you get that every every single episode could be placed anywhere in time kind of a thing and you know things happen and things are interesting but you don't do a whole lot of changing you know the the main thing you got your team of your how many people were there six Seven. And then you have Fitz and Simmons. You got Ward and May, and 
Coulson and Sky. Sky, and is that it? I think so. Okay, so there was six. The six main folks you generally don't F with. But they F'd with all of them. <laughs> Every single one of them got F'd with. And the new season starts and everything is different and very... Un I, I can understand that some people might be turned off by it because it's not the same as what it was before. It's not like the plucky group that gets together and performs their missions and does their thing. The group dynamic that they had built is gone. You know, one person had this thing happen, the other person's got brain damage, the other person is doing this thing, and it's... I don't know, it's interesting that they did that drastic of a of a shake-up at the end of Season 1 going into Season 2. And I don't know if they're ever going to try and bring it back to the way it was before. Uh, they keep introducing more new people. We've got Triplet, who has become kind of a... I guess late in Season 1, he came in and kind of became a deal, and he's still coming back. And they're even bringing in all sorts of new people. I saw a thing on one of those websites that tells you crap. Paris Hilton. <laughs> it wasn't Paris Hilton, though. But it was. they were saying that somebody was contracted to be Mockingbird, mm -hmm. who is a character that I've never heard of but does exist already. <laughs> and the person that's playing Mockingbird was the girl that was Wonder cast Woman. as Wonder mm -hmm. Woman in the show that never made it. Mm -hmm. And she was also Lady J on the uh, G.I. Joe movie that I saw. Retaliation, I think it was called. Yeah, Adrian Palicki is her name. Yeah. And but got... she hasn't shown up yet? Or seen the... She has shown up now in the episodes that I've seen. Oh, okay. So. But see, I, I was I kind of want us to go back and talk a little bit more about that first season. Okay, we'll go back and talk Where about it. Where would you say was the high point of that first season? And, and do you was there an episode you can point at and say that was the turning point when suddenly the show was really really good? Sky in the red dress. Oh wait, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I think that was the episode after you stopped watching it the first time. <laughs> if I'd gotten one episode farther, I'd have been like, oh yeah, I'll stick with this. If only I'd stuck through one more episode, I totally would have been hooked. No, uh, what was where was the turning point? <sighs> It's hard to say. I'm trying to remember the sequence of, of things in my head, although I probably might remember it better than you because it's more fresh. But I think because I watched it so fast, it might be less segmented or whatever, if you know what I'm saying. Sure. Well, let's let's just agree that the low point of the first season was all that stuff about uh, Sky's hacker organization and what, what was it called <laughs> the Something rising dawn. tide rising tide and oh what does that mean that she's bad and oh geez that rising tide stuff went nowhere it, it was just crappy filler man <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i'm trying to think i think maybe maybe about even mid-season somewhere I, I remember when they brought mike anderson peterson Whatever Mike. that guy's name, I can't remember what it was. Mike. Mike something. Peterson. I think is it Peterson? But he was in the very first episode. Right, but he was gone for like ten episodes after that before he reappeared, and then you're like, oh hey, it's that guy. And they brought him back, and then he got captured, and then he started to become he became Deathlock. That was interesting stuff. I don't know, dude. I can't. What do you think the the turning point is? Maybe I can well see if I agree with you or not. Somewhere in the middle of the first season, they finally decided, okay, we're going to answer what happened to Coulson. And I felt like once that had been put away, like the episode following what had happened to Coulson or whatever, I, I started to feel like they're going somewhere. And I didn't know where they were going, but in hindsight, it's easy to see where they were going. They were preparing for the tie-in with Captain America 2. And so for me, it's just like once they brought in Agent Garrett, who was played by Bill Paxton, the show just started firing on all cylinders. And again, because I think they knew, okay, we're going to introduce the fact that Hydra is among us and that some of these guys are Hydra. And, and you know, all that stuff 
they were aiming toward that. And it's like, oh, I can't wait to find out, you know, maybe one of our guys is going to be Hydra. Or maybe, we'll, and we'll point fingers at everybody. Who's Hydra? Are you Hydra? He's Hydra. I just, all of that tie in to Captain America stuff was the best the show ever got, I thought. And there was the, the episode you mentioned with, I think her name was Lorelai. Oh, Lorelai. Well, yeah, uh -huh. Sif. She was a, an Sif Asgardian was... villainous, a ridiculously hot <laughs> Asgardian villainous. And I felt like that was a really, really strong episode. And that was right before, or maybe in the middle of that uh, yeah, lead up to been, Captain America 2. The, they first brought in Bill Paxton in that episode when they kind of discovered what happened to Coulson and how he was brought, because they went to that base that was like in the mountain or whatever and they didn't have the code for and bill paxton went in there with him when they went in there and they discovered it. I, I can't remember if that was the very first episode that he was in i think it was but it was right along there anyways if it wasn't and then i think yeah the lorelei episode was after that and then you know bill it might paxton have been the same back episode again a few episodes later because if you recall, the episode before Lorelai had Lorelai in it at the very end. And right. There's a, like a, a newlywed couple and they've yeah. just gotten married or whatever. And Lorelai walks up to this dude and he just leaves the wife. Yeah. And uh, and that's how that episode ended. Um, I thought that was really, really cool. I totally enjoyed the tie-in to the Thor world. And early, early when Thor 2 came out in the theaters, they had a tie-in episode of Thor that wasn't so good, but it had um, P Peter McNichol in it as he was an Asgardian who had retired on Earth or he liked Earth. Oh, and, right. And, I remember uh, that one. But that episode started and they had hyped it up that this is going to tie into Thor 2. And so there was all this speculation of, oh, who's going to be in it and, and what's going on? And are they going to go after that big monster that got left behind in <laughs> Thor 2? And it was nothing. They were just like cleaning up debris and yeah. saying no oh, it's a shame we missed this the, I, I heard there were gods fighting and portals opening up to other universes and and chris hemsworth's giant arms it's a shame we got here so late and and that was it that was it the whole that was it wasn't even the uh, teaser before the credits rolled they had put all that crap behind them but um they were building things and, and see it's kind of difficult to, to know what to say and what not to say as far as spoilers go but, like, the character of Ward, they set him up to be, like, this awesome badass. In a couple episodes, we would see flashbacks to him in the well. Do you remember? He had uh -huh. this brother that was a bully and there all this stuff. There was an episode called The Well with that in it, yeah. And I feel like they were going somewhere with that. And then when they decided to make a fairly significant choice in the direction of the series, they abandoned all that stuff. Don't be so sure. That's all I can say. I don't want to spoil anything for you. Well, I mean, maybe they didn't abandon it, but they took a huge right turn. And I, I don't believe for a second that their plans for Ward were always where they went with Ward. But uh, once that was revealed, holy crap, it was so, so cool. Because it was kind of like when we, uh, we saw Monsters University and I was like, well, what would we really need is if they didn't get accepted back into the monster the scaring program and all that. And there were actually consequences to their breaking the rules. And then I was like, whoa, they didn't. They didn't get <laughs> for all this forgiven. And, and on that episode, where we're finding out all sorts of twisted turns and awful things going on in the world, I said, you know, it would be really, really cool. And that's what happened in the episode. And, and so I was just like, wow, you guys, you guys got me. Thanks for going there. And once... Can I just say what I'm talking about? Spoil. Okay, everybody. Uh, announcer man, tell them, warn them of the spoiler alert. Warning, the following episode contains spoilers. Listener discretion is advised. Thank you. And now we can move on. There are spoilers ahead. There, there have been spoilers behind, really. So if, if you aren't caught up to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and you mean to, you should have not listened. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Well, you know, in Captain America 2, it's revealed that Hydra has been among S.H.I.E.L.D. since the very beginning. There have been sleeper agents, people who are actually Hydra, who just go along pretending to be part of S.H.I.E.L.D. until the time comes when they can reveal their many heads. And uh, 
a- uh, Agent Garrett, who's played by Bill Paxton, is revealed to be one of these Hydra guys. And, you know, all of our team feels so betrayed, especially Ward, who was like picked and trained and and and, and brought, basically brought up by Agent Garrett. You know, it feels so, you know, like he takes it personally. And then at the very end of that episode, it's revealed that Ward has been Hydra also all along. And, and that goes, oh, there, there was just so much fun, like the last four or five episodes of the season when we knew he was Hydra and the characters didn't. And there would be all of this intrigue of, you know, like Maria Hill thinks that Coulson might be Hydra. And, and you know, um, well, there, there were other characters. And who are they Hydra? Are they good? Are they bad? Can they be trusted? And all that stuff. And uh, how long can Ward maintain the pretense that everything is the same as it was? Oh, that was so cool. And they took such courageous leaps with this character of Ward, who I felt like, you know, they had built up. It was, we're really supposed to like this guy and root for this guy. And then, uh, you know, how deep will his betrayal go? Would they dare have him actually do something truly villainous? And they did. And so when that episode, when that season ended, I was just like, there is no way they can go back to the way they were in season two. Like, how are they going to do this? And, 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 you know, as you've been explaining, they didn't. Uh, in season two, at least as far as I've watched, Ward is not a member of the team. He's a, he's still, you know, he's a Hannibal Lecter type character that they go to for yeah. information every once in a while. And I just love that. I was like, wow, that's amazing. And, and see, he attempts to kill Fitz and Simmons in like the second to last episode. It might have been the last episode. It was the episode. last episode, yeah. Nick and, Fury is the one that comes to their aid. That's right. And uh, Fitz is goes without air for so long that he has brain damage. And when the <laughs> season two started, he's not better. They remembered that they had done this to the character. There were consequences to actions, which is another thing that people don't tend to do on television. It just that it really impressed me. And it makes me like the character all the more because he's got some real problems. Yeah. When season two begins. And I just, yeah, that's that's neat. And you know that that's something that Whedon probably pushed for because Whedon has a lot of hours of television under his belt. And even if he's not on the set for every single episode because he's busy making, you know, Avengers 2 or whatever, he's like, no, no, guys, come on. I've done that. Let's not just make episode 24 of season one. Let's do a totally different show and let's change this up and let's see. And that's what, at least for me, keeps a show fresh. You know, if you turn on an episode of Seinfeld or something like that, you don't know what season it is based on, you know, because because it's all, the sets are all the same. The characters always act the same. And, you know, it's very similar scenarios and all that stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with Seinfeld. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Thank you. But uh, the, the way that a, a television show can change and evolve is feels like the, it's a very modern invention. It's it's something it's like post Buffy the Vampire Slayer shows can be serialized now and they can they can link together and reward you for watching two episodes ago and for remembering who this character is and that and they don't have to just reset everything at the end of each episode because who knows what order they'll be re-showing these episodes in syndication yeah it is really impressive that and it's interesting too that you know they built up the relationship between Fitz and Simmons Almost to the point where, I mean, they always call them Fitzsimmons. They don't even bother to call them Fitz and Simmons. They just call them Fitzsimmons like they're one person. And now they are not. He's got mental problems. She can't deal with it. She's not around anymore. He's imagining that she's there. It's interesting and it's really sad. It's really poignant to... to to have that happen to build something up that much and then dash it down like that it's almost like they killed somebody which joss whedon is well known for doing but this is killing somebody in just a different way they took that character of fitzsimmons and killed it and now there is fitz and simmons yeah, it's interesting. I mean, they've got a bunch of characters because right now they're they're in a different area where they're like in what's left of Shield's base, and they have these the folks that are there, 
But there, yeah, uh, so many people. There's a it lot of like... new folks in. There's Lucy Lawless, uh, and her crew, which this is the British guy. Yeah, the British guy. I and think there's another... another black guy. The guy, a guy looks just like Luke Cage should look. He's like six eight, yeah. and he's bald, and he's got a goatee, goatee, and he's got arms the size of yeah that guy. And weirdly, trunks. that guy is like a, a tech dude. Yeah, he's there <laughs> he to like, help he looks... Fitz do his job, and I don't get it because there's like, oh guys, didn't you hear you're doing a Luke Cage series? This guy's on the wrong show. <laughs> yeah, maybe he is yet to be Luke Cage. I don't know, but yeah, it's to, he's basically taking over for Simmons. I don't even know what his name is, though. <laughs> He's been in the show for six episodes, and I still haven't got it. I haven't got any of their names, really, I guess. The British dude, I don't know his name either. And he's become a big character. They keep going back to him a lot. And even more fun stuff is in store for him. You'll you'll enjoy episodes that you haven't seen yet. It's a Joss Whedon show, and it has all the hallmarks of Joss Whedon shows, which... It's the reason why I like Joss Whedon shows. They have one thing that Joss does really, really good is puts together groups of people and makes them interesting and makes them fun. And uh, another thing he does really well is gives women things to do. You know, Instead they, of just be the chick? Right. Instead of be the Smurfette, I, I've learned about this. <laughs> the Smurfette principle is this thing where, you know, they have a group of people... And then there's always the one chick that, that's the Smurfette, I guess. And, and Joss doesn't do that. He always has several women in his shows. There's that thing, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's some kind of feminist test where, like, you see if there is more than... I think than, it's called the Bechdel test. Is it yeah. Bechdel, where there's, like, more than one character that's a female that has a name <laughs> um, and that they speak to it's each like, other... But about, about something other than a man. And yeah, I think Joss Whedon's show, pretty much every one of them will pass that test by the first episode being over. Because he's he always has lots of female characters. And, uh, you know, they get names. They get to talk. <laughs> they get to say awesome dialogue because this is a Joss Whedon show and the dialogue is always great. And so that's cool. Um... So yeah, it makes it definitely a, 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 sh a lot of things about it that make his shows worth watching and fun. Well, uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, how many episodes have you seen of season two? Five? Six. There six. are six. So how would you compare the sixth episode of season two to the sixth episode of season one? It's a lot better. I think that the show, because of all the episodes that precede it, there is so much things, or so much things, there are so many things that they can hearken back to, that they can reference, that they can use, and uh, and they're doing so. And so even though it's totally different, and it's kind of hard to deal with, I have to admit, to see the show be so different and have such a different feel, you know, you get, you watch a show and you really enjoy the the feel that it has and then you take that and <laughs> turn it all you know you take the rubik's cube and you mix it all up so that all the colors are on different spots and yeah it's not the same thing anymore and, and it can be difficult and i can understand i guess why they say that maybe the ratings are slipping because i'm sure a lot of people are like hey this isn't the show that i loved where did that show go huh it's changed a lot it's not the same which well in the first season, Phil Coulson has his own little tiny band, a team, uh -huh. and then and they basically just investigate whatever they want. I think Fury had given him carte blanche to go do whatever he wants, whatever he finds interesting. And in season two, he is Nick Fury. He is director of S.H.I.E.L.D., and he's forced to just be there and make tons and tons of decisions, and he just can't go out and do all this stuff that he did before, which I can see being really frustrating if you're... If if the thing that you loved was Coulson and those guys solving the mystery each week, but all the characters are still there, right? They are. I mean, <laughs> Simmons is now working for Hydra, but it's still. <laughs> oh, by the way, that reveal was so great because they were playing some awful like early '60s pop song, 
you know, it's like sunshine, lollipops and Trojans. And you're just like, wait, what? Because what? she's at her new job. And you're like, what is she abandoned shield for? Like some like lowly. She was an analyst in some kind of thing, you know, and and she's in this throwback, like a 60s outfit that a woman would wear to to work to be a secretary and then at one point you see the hydra logo on the wall just right there it's bright as day you know they're not even trying to hide it anymore it's like oh yeah we're hydra guys oh i thought that that was just great and you probably know where that's going but oh, that was really really neat yeah there's some there's some fun down the line for you i, I have to admit uh we were almost back where you were yesterday <laughs> oh, okay. but then we watched several episodes i think i was at episode four and i watched five and six yesterday and they're pretty good yeah six i would have to say that episode six this season was really good it does more of that kind of stuff that you're talking about you know who can be trusted what's what's the what's real who's right who's wrong who's hydra who's not uh you know that kind of stuff and see, that's just one of the balls that they have to work with. In the first season, there was basically what happened to Coulson, what's Coulson's deal, how did he come back, and what is Sky's deal, where did Sky come from, what is Sky, why is she special? These are the two balls that they juggled, and maybe there were more that you can remember that I can't, but those were the two big ones. And I felt like once they had finally put behind them the Coulson one, you know they 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 were moving at a much faster pace, and 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 see that's it's good I, because juggling two balls really not impressive. <laughs> and no, I you know I've got a, a lot of experience with ball handling, yeah. So I yeah, I, I know what you're more. talking about. Yeah. But I remember okay, and and this was six months ago, eight months ago, when they finally revealed what happened with Coulson. A lot of people were really upset about that, were really disappointed about that. Because they had built it up as such a huge question. What's the deal? And they had asked it in the very first episode. So we had had probably 10 to 12 episodes of people just speculating and saying maybe it was this. And maybe he's a life model decoy. And maybe, you know, he's not Coulson at all. Or maybe, you know, he's a he, he never really did die. Or, or, you know, what's the story? And so when they finally revealed it, a lot of people were like, oh, come on, man. This is that He was dead and they brought him back to life? Or... They had some bug from the Matrix working on his brain or, you know, all this stuff. But I felt like when you ask a question that big, it's not possible to satisfy everybody. Right. It's kind of the lost problem. Um, you know, Lost had that huge question above all the other questions of what is the island? Where is the island? Why are they on the island? And when they finally answer that, a lot of people are just like, oh, that's not what I thought it was going to be. Damn it. That yeah. means it sucked. It's a, a a conundrum that people have had for years and years. Ever since, like, who killed Laura Palmer? When you find out, you're just like, uh. Oh, who shot Mr. Burns? Who, sh who shot JR? That kind of <laughs> stuff. Although I think they answered that in the next episode. But this, the answer to what happened to Coulson was like a multi-part answer. It wasn't just, oh, he wasn't really dead. We brought him back. I mean, which is what they said at the very, very beginning. In episode one, they said, oh, he was dead for 37 seconds or something like that. Uh -huh. Or maybe it was even 37 minutes. And then later we find out, no, it was a, a little bit more extensive than that. But there was still the question of how did they do it? And in the very final episode of the first season, we found out why they did it. It's just one of those things that... That's not really what the show is about. In the same way that Twin Peaks wasn't about who killed Laura Palmer, it was about this weird town and the people that lived in it and the evil that lurked there and this FBI agent who was innocent, sort of innocent and naive, having all of that stuff taken away from him. The uh, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. wasn't just, you know, what happened to Coulson.com. And so, uh, I don't know, I, I, I think with season two... They've, they've, the, the main question that wasn't answered in season one is what is Sky? What's Sky's deal? And they're still going on with that. And the problem with that is there's no way that they can satisfy everybody. Mm -hmm. Whether she's an alien, whether she's genetically altered, whether she's some previously existing Marvel character, whether it's like, oh, Sky happened to be Spider Woman or whatever. 
that's going to disappoint other people. And so you can't make the show just be that. Right. And I think that they've done a great job with asking a bunch of other little questions. So you feel somewhat satisfied when one of those little questions gets answered. And that was another thing that I thought Lost did very, very well is for every answer that they gave you, they would say, oh, yeah, but here's two more questions. And, and, you know, other people don't like that. But I, I think that you've got to do something like yeah, that with on a, television. Yeah, with a TV show or, you know, something that keeps going and going and going, like the Energizer Bunny, he has to ask a lot of questions, too, to be able to keep going. But, yeah, like a comic book, uh, those kind of things, serialized things have to, you know, they can't ever answer all the questions. They've got to, you know, keep going to be interesting. And... and you know, that's something that has steadily worked its way into TV. Like we were saying, you know, Seinfeld was not that way. That was not all that long ago that Seinfeld was around. For and... us, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> For the listeners, it was like, yeah, my grandpa's day. For some people, they weren't born yet when Seinfeld was over. But, yeah, I mean, it wasn't all that long ago where the idea was you do not have a show where it doesn't go reset to zero when the episode is done because people need to be able to just tune in whenever somebody that hasn't watched the show before you know your ratings can't grow if people tune in and think oh i don't know what's going on in this show i won't watch it it seems like they've basically given up on that thing they don't make shows that are reset to zero type shows anymore well people watch television in a different way now that's so true. many people just TiVo it or wait for it to go on DVD or they stream it on Netflix Binge or they pirate watch. it like you do. Hey, and in the old days, fifth. in the old days, they had to be prepared to rerun them in any order and say, well, you know, that's OK. Nobody's going to know the difference. And now if something like that happens, the ratings for that rerun are non-existence. Nobody watches an episode that's out of order. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's just, why would they do that? It's better to be like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and just go off the air for months at a time than to show reruns in this day and age. And so and what I'm getting at is, <laughs> so... is we actually have the, something. I, as far as I know, it's not been done before. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to go on hiatus in a few weeks and it's going to be replaced by Agent Carter, which is a show set in the 1940s starring Haley Atwell as Peggy Carter, uh, that's, you know, also Marvel Cinematic Universe. And as far as I know, the same people that are work are running Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I think there's only six episodes of Agent Carter. But once that's run its course, then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will come back. And the very first scene in the first episode of the second season had... Peggy Carter in it. It was a well, flashback yeah, to a, the end of World War II. Another and cameo for it you. It was that, so uh, rad. Yeah. Holy cow. And just, it had Dum Dum Dugan. It did. And uh, who else? I always, and the I, Asian I, one, I guess. Yeah, I can remember Dum Dum Dugan's name just because of how goofy it is, I guess. The rest of them, I don't remember their names other than uh, Bucky. But you'll know their names but three, I recognize three months their faces. from now. You'll know all of those yeah, guys. Yeah, I suppose and that's I think probably that that's true. Just, a really neat thing, and to make a movie, a show that's set in the forties, it's like that seems like a cable thing to do. Yeah, to definitely. do it on the main network, I'm excited about it, and I really <laughs> like Peggy Carter. I think Haley Atwell is awesome, man. Yeah. And yeah, I'm hoping to see all sorts of uh, of things that you can't have in a show that's set in 2014 on there. Uh, Agent Carter was spun off from a short film that they did called Agent Carter, ironically enough, that just showed, you know, what her life was like after World War II was done. And now suddenly she's a woman and they're second class citizens. And she had all of this authority and all this ability during the war. But once the war is done, then women are expected to know their place. Yeah, they're supposed to get back out of the factory and go back home and start having babies. And uh, booming, booming with babies. I thought that that was really, really <laughs> interesting and unique. It had Bradley Whitford in it as like her boss who was really sexist and like slapped her on the ass and stuff, as you do. And, <laughs> and I just I thought that was really, really neat. And apparently a lot of people thought that it was really neat because they felt like 
we could spin this seven minute thing into, into a, a seven hour show. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if they bring Agent Carter back next year too. I in hope the exact so. same way. Or it just at depends least on the, like it. Yeah, that's true. They might decide to go another way. And in 2015, we're going to have four, five, right? Marvel. Uh, what will they be? Is that will Daredevil? Yeah, Daredevil. The, the, all those Iron Netflix Fist. ones will be uh, available now. So it's Daredevil, Iron Fist, Power Man 5000. What is his name? Pa- is it uh, Luke is Cage? It Luke I think Cage is what, is what they're call calling it. it. I, I, they could call it Power Man, but I he's more known Luke by Luke Cage now. But they and then, probably throw in Power Man like they've done in the Amazing or the Ultimate Spider Man. Well, P- Power Man is his name, his superhero name. Luke right? Cage yeah, that's what he calls himself. He's like, well, then I'm gonna be Power Man, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah. And then the fourth one is uh, Jessica Jones, which was based off a comic called Alias Jessica Jones, but I don't imagine they'll call it Alias. <laughs> and uh, there's another show called that. Well, probably, uh, you Maybe. know. Uh, and then the, all, when those have all run their course, no, those are all Netflix. shows. Those are all though, Netflix right? shows. There's going to be a crossover series called The Defenders. That's all four of those guys uh, on a team along with whoever else they introduced during those <laughs> series. And, oh, boy, that is some exciting stuff, these announcements. It is. You the, know, the, the thing that they do, supposedly, with Netflix series is they do the entire series, and then they just release it as one yeah. giant dump. See, I hate that because if I choose to watch one episode at a time, you know, the people on Facebook or whatever would be saying, oh, episode six was really, really good. Did you see that? Full frontal nudity. And, <laughs> oh, uh, it was good then. And I'll be like, well, 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 that doesn't, I don't see that for five more weeks. But uh, that's just me. Most people, they say a lot of people really binge watch shows now. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing. Somebody I know at work, you know, the last person I would expect to be a person that just sits at home all weekend long binge watching a TV show. You know, absolutely gorgeous woman that should be like, I don't know what gorgeous woman, out dancing in the club all weekend long, whatever gorgeous women do. But instead, she was binge-watching television shows all weekend long, what I heard. And I'm just like, wow, if that's what this person is doing, then everybody must binge-watch TV shows now. But yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, It'll be fun, because when we have all those, then, you know, that'll just be another one that me and all my kids can watch together, because we really enjoy that stuff. We might have to get together and do a That Gets My Goat About Agent Carter and get together and do a That Gets My Goat About Daredevil. Sure. I mean, these are really soon that will. these are happening. But, oh, it's exciting times. You know, I, there's a show on the WB, which I know is an, a network, but I always call it the WB. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm an old guy. Where are my teeth? Called The Flash. And it's based on the DC superhero comics. And I've been watching it and the father of Barry Allen is the man who played the flash in the show in the night in 1990. And when I was a kid in 1990, this was such a big deal that they were making a show, uh, you know, based on a comic book, you know, you get one of these every five or six years. It was, they were so rare, you know, and, and they never, ever worked. You know, Wonder Woman, I guess got two seasons. And it was considered successful yeah. for that sort of thing. Wonder and the Woman benchmark and the was The Incredible Hulk, which I think got five seasons. And uh, But that was a miracle. I mean, it's just for some reason, they had made the format of The Incredible Hulk such that, that not just geeks watched it, but everybody watched it or whatever. But um, watching, and I think there were only 13 episodes yeah, of, that it, of The Flash. Yeah, didn't last long. But... Oh, it was so exciting to see something like this. And, you know, I hadn't, I didn't know who The Flash was. Maybe you'd seen him on the Super Friends cartoon or whatever, but he, he just didn't seem like that dynamic a character. But there was a hunger for that stuff in 1990. You know, 1990, Dick Tracy came out. It was right Dark after Man the, came out. The Batman film had just come out like and, the year before. Yeah, even in the cinema, it was really rare to get one of these comic superhero properties. Now, every network has one, except for CBS, but F them. And <laughs> it's just, it's so weird that, you know, it's, it's, 
the bread and butter. And we were talking about how many superhero movies are in the theaters now or about to hit the theaters. Hold on. And, and we, yeah, we'll, we can we're talk about that We're doing a whole sometime. episode about this, so don't, but, don't shoot your wad early. Uh, but anyhow, the point I was just trying to make is we are, these are really amazing times for geeks and for superhero fans, comic book fans and all that to have this much thing. And it's just a plethora of it's a, an embarrassment of riches. And so, yeah, mostly this was talking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but uh, I did just want to end on that, that uh, it's amazing. I mean, if you don't like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there's five other superhero shows. Yeah, we may do episodes show. about them as well. I've started watching Flash with my kids. We're on episode three. I think there's four already out, so I haven't seen that fourth one yet. Uh, Gotham, we have also been watching together, although we've only seen two episodes, and so far, nobody's really keen on Gotham, so we may wind up not seeing all of that. There's Arrow, of course. Arrow, my Which kids I have watched. Season. I think they've watched the first few seasons because they were available on uh, Netflix, but not the new episodes. They, they, there was some, one of those disconnects where, you know, they weren't able to get to the time you know get through the ones that they needed to see before they got to the ones that were on so they're a little bit off on that and uh and what is there there's constantine, constantine right we i saw that's that on nbc yeah that's a dc i don't know constantine that's a dc character yeah i think the comics were called hellblazer but john constantine is the main character in those and, and uh, so they, he's a guy that fights demons and whatnot he is, yeah, and I I haven't seen that show yet. It's just too it's new, its first but I season, will watch right? it. Yeah, it's it's. I think only one episode has aired, maybe okay. two. But I will give it a try, just because you know I gave Gotham a try, even though it's like, oh, I'm not going to like this. We'll see how that goes. But again, just amazing. That it there's is. this much stuff. It definitely is. I think it's enough to do a whole episode about. And so, yay, verily, we will. Maybe it'll even be the next episode, although probably not, because we've got a few in the can ones that need to be let out of the can. We'll see. All I right. guess it depends on what Rish is most excited about editing. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, is there anything more you want to say about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Oh, it's awesome. You should watch it. I think you would enjoy it. Even if you're like, oh, I'm... every show is going to have ebbs and flows. There will mm -hmm. be times when it's not as awesome as it could be. But I think this is a show that you should stick with until it's been really crappy for a long time. <laughs> because it'll probably flow back. Uh, and yeah, I think, I don't, I don't know. Check it out. Enjoy it. It's fun. And yeah, we'll see if the ratings continue to drop if there's a third season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But my guess is yes, ABC has you know Disney pressure on there. These movies make an unbelievable amount of money. And it's almost like a free advertising kind of thing. For yeah, the movies. I wonder if they may well just start throwing some of these characters into the movies. Well, uh, well we talked about to that to give they, a boost to the TV show. Even they had uh, Jasper Sitwell on Agents oh, yeah. of Shield. He was on there too, and then he another. he was fairly significant in Captain America too, and that paid off more if you knew who he was from Agents of Shield. Yep. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see one or two of them in one of the in Avengers, maybe, or in Captain America or Thor or something like that. You might find. Yeah, Avengers 2 has so many characters in it. I find it unlikely that Joss would find room for these characters. But if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be Whedon. Since, you know, it's kind of his baby anyway, you know. Yeah. Anyhow, we will see. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you had a good time. We'll be back again with some more next time around. That's right. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween! Oh, it wasn't recording. That Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons 3.0, attribution, no derivatives, share alike license. That means you can't sell it, but you can share it with everybody. It also means you have too much time on your hands. Okay, so you 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 think that you're alone. In fact, you're in the house. You know that you're alone. 
<sighs> and then suddenly you've got this feeling of, wait, wait, I'm not, a, I'm uh, not alone anymore. Yeah, and you dude. look around and you discover. Yes, that, that, that Halloween is over. All right. No? Didn't have anything there. I just, I wanted you to interrupt me earlier. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's how I was going. I was doing like, uh, uh, stuff, but you wanted me to interrupt even sooner? Well, because I actually wasn't going anywhere with the you think you're alone kind of thing. Okay. We'll start over and I'll interrupt you sooner. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you know what they had at Target? On um, 50% off or 30% off or whatever? Whole bunch of boxes of booberry. <laughs> Should we go get some? 